My name is James Wagner. Um, I was just curious if you could speak to, it seems to me that there's, I, I notice that maybe our culture rewards masculine energy more and that there's some, f the feminine energy of like healing and nurturing isn't as financially rewarded. So yes, a person can choose to do more masculine things if they want the financial rewards, but if a, a truly feminine radiant, healing, mothering sort of energy, whether it come from a male or a female, we're looking for a career, that those careers don't seem to me to be as, um, like they compensate quite as much. Absolutely. So I was wondering, um, I don't know, maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Absolutely. Did you all hear James question, James's question? Okay. okay. Yes, here's the principle. The more we want to do something, the more fulfilling it is, the less it is likely to pay because the more people compete to do it, the less somebody needs to pay to, to pay someone to do it. So people love children so much that many people do it for free. So we don't need to pay much to have people do things that many people do for free. So I won't be a mother unless you pay me. Yes. <laughs> Conversely, the less people want to do something like be a coal miner or be a garbage collector, the more, um, chance, the, the more the chances are that we have to pay somebody extra money to risk your life to be a coal miner, to be a garbage collector. So if, you, if we asked ourselves how many of us would prefer to be a teacher or a coal miner, most of us, well, let's, how many teacher? How many coal miner? So if we need, but we need, but almost everything in this room is made from coal to some degree. Um, and so, we, and we wouldn't have it or the lifestyle that we have if we didn't have that coal mind or some equivalent thereof mind. Excuse the environmental implications for a moment, but it's just an example. Garbage collector would be another example. One of the major differences between male and female job choices is that women, for example, are far more likely to enter in college the arts, foreign languages, um, areas, that are, areas that are fulfilling those career, uh, art, um, art historian, but years later we look at any art historian, male or female, or any person do, studying foreign languages, the chances are much greater that they're likely to earn less money than the engineer and the biochemist than somebody else. And so, um, that, so that if you want to pursue spirituality and you want your job to be spiritually fulfilling, the chances are a lot of other people do too. And the more Ken succeeds, the more the competition for those, those uh, jobs will, go, uh, will, will, will get greater and greater, the more the pay will go down. Let, let me bring up one another little small issue about that, James, too. And I, I think what um, Warren is saying is exactly right, but this is a background thing to consider. Uh, those of you who are, are familiar with integral theory know that we talk about um, interiors and exteriors, interior quadrants being consciousness, culture, subjectivity, interiority, and so on. And the, and the exterior right-hand quadrants tend to deal with those things in the concrete, material, external world. And if you actually look at economics and you look at what money can buy, money can buy almost anything in the right-hand or exterior quadrants, and it can buy nothing in the interior. So you can, no amount of money will buy you happiness, mutual understanding, love, concern, and so on. But in the right hand, money is a fair bargain. You can trade sex for money, not love, but bodily exchange. You can go and say, I will put in this many hours of physical labor and you will pay me for that because this is all material goods that are being moved. To the extent that, and this is very general, men are engaged in that exterior marketplace, then there's something that you can actually can pay for that. But it's very hard to put a tag on, I'll give you $10,000 if you love me like my mommy. <laughs> you can't, it just, you know, it's a slippery thing. So what you have to look at in terms of how societies have handled this is what, once you get out of sort of an overt sort of oppression kind of victim mentality, there's plenty of that that occurs. But so much of what happens in societies are the best that men and women can co-create at a given time under the circumstances that they're in. And part of what we're doing when we change roles now for masculine and feminine is not that we have some sort of oppressive situation we have to overcome.
but that the roles that were appropriate yesterday in agrarian societies, for example, entirely appropriate yesterday, are no longer appropriate today. So we're trying to overcome that by creating these new roles. And part of the difficulty is just that. How do you take some of these qualities, these interior qualities, that really don't have a market value? What, what does that mean? Does that mean we're devaluing them? Well, maybe in terms of dollar amounts we are, but can we find other ways that we value those? And traditionally, sort of women's power has always been the bartering of those intangibles. And that's a very, very powerful power that women have. And it doesn't get entered in an economic ledger because what's being bartered is not money for money but all sorts of other emotional economies of which women have an enormous amount of power. And so, and so that, that's another issue that we're talking about. And that's, it's not so much that, that society, it's, it's, it, you have, we have to be careful to say society doesn't pay for this versus society has no value for it. Yes, yes. Two very different things. Uh, 